Hi, my name is Frank Gaffney. I'm the president of the Center for Security Policy here in Washington. Uh, we are thrilled to be a member of and, uh, and sponsoring uh, the Coalition to Stop Sharia, uh, an effort that has come together in just the past couple of days, um, an interfaith, um, nonpartisan um, group of individuals and organizations that has um, decided that this is the time to begin contesting seriously a seditious program that uh, authoritative Islam describes as Sharia. Um, we've come together to call attention to and to counter this, the insinuation of Sharia into our society and those of other freedom-loving people through various means, both uh, stealthy and nonviolent, and um, through the use or the threat of the use of force. I'm going to say just a few words about what brings us together, and then I'm going to ask those of um, my colleagues who are here, and, and when you want you come over here, so a little more balanced, per se. Uh, there are additional statements um, uh, outside from some of the other groups that are present. Yeah, come together, please. Um, there are now 25 uh, different organizations, and uh, as I say, this is in just the space of the past couple of days that we've begun coming together. Um, one of the most insidious of the techniques being used to promote uh, Sharia that is aimed at the very heart of the American economy, its financial sector, in the, is uh, something that has generally been known as Sharia compliant finance, or SCF for short. Um, it's interesting that as our efforts to counter Sharia have begin, begun to gain ground, uh, SCF's proponents seem to have decided that they would um, adopt a slightly different nomenclature. Uh, they now are deciding to call it Islamic finance, or in some cases ethical finance, or structured finance. But uh, to paraphrase, paraphrase Gertrude Stein, a toxic substance by any other name is still hazardous your health. And we believe that very much to be true of Sharia compliant finance uh, under whatever guise it comes about. Um, a word or two about the Center for Security Policy's work in this. We've been at it for about a year now, uh, doing a number of things to try to raise the level of awareness about what Sharia is and what Sharia compliant finance is as a means of advancing it. Um, one of the most important of the products that we've uh, generated so far is a legal memorandum by our general counsel, David Yerushalmi, a very comprehensive and we think authoritative assessment that finds that those engaging in Sharia compliant finance have both civil liabilities and criminal exposure. And we think this is a sufficiently important point that uh, we were delighted when Senator John Kyle, the number two Republican in the United States Senate um, and a member of the Finance Committee, asked the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, the Secretary of the Treasury, and the Attorney General of the United States to address the findings of David Yerushalmi's report. To date, only two of them, uh, Chris Cox, at the SEC and Robert Bernanke have responded. Um, we have copies of the letters that we have in turn responded to them with. Um, I believe it's not outside um, on the website, which is uh, usastopsharia.org. Um, but it's instructive that neither uh, Chairman Cox nor Chairman Bernanke addressed the fundamental question, which is what is Sharia? And why is it a problem uh, that we have people who are promoting Sharia, which, as I said, is a seditious conspiracy to bring about the overthrow of the United States government, and that, for that matter, those of other secular democracies around the world, in favor of a global theocracy under Sharia ruled by a power. It is very explicit in authoritative Islam that that is not only the 
obligation of all Muslims to pursue, but that violent jihad is their obligation in its pursuit. And where that's not possible, stealthy jihad is to be engaged in. Um, I also would commend to you, those of you who are here with us, uh, a very useful monograph on this subject that distills the Yerushalmi Memorandum and a lot of other information about Sharia, about the Sharia advisors that are instrumental to this business of Sharia compliant finance, who they are, what they espouse, why this is uh, so problematic. Um, we do have copies of this, um, this document, Sharia Law and Financial Jihad, How Should America Respond, uh, co-sponsored by the McCormick Foundation and the Center for Security Policy. Um, let me just turn to the reason we're here today, and that is the uh, seminar for the policy community that is being convened in a few hours by the Department of the Treasury. Just a couple of blocks from here, we are going to have people who are actively promoting Sharia finance, uh, many of them from Harvard University and other interested parties, talking to government officials about why they, in turn, should be supporting Sharia-compliant finance or Islamic finance. The course is called Islamic Finance 101. Uh, its purpose seems unmistakable, given the complexion of the speakers, all of whom, it appears, support Sharia-compliant finance, none of whom, it appears, is prepared to talk to these government officials about what Sharia is and what constitutes, as a result, uh, the problems with a financial program designed to advance this seditious conspiracy. Um, it's interesting that in recent months, uh, a great deal of controversy was stirred up by the head of the Church of England, <coughs> the Archbishop of Canterbury, who declared, to considerable consternation among his people, that it was unavoidable that Sharia would be observed in Britain. Left well remembered was his explanation for why he believed that was the case. He said, we have already accommodated ourselves to Sharia compliant finance. So it is unavoidable that we will have to comply and uh, observe Sharia in due course. We are determined not to let that happen here. And we are challenging the Treasury Department in its efforts to promote Sharia and Sharia compliant finance. Uh, though they uh, disavow that this is about promoting it, when you look at the roster of Speakers, it is clear that is the purpose. Many of them are both <coughs> advocates for Sharia finance and in some cases personally benefiting from this industry. It is for this reason that we think at the very least the Treasury Department, particularly as Barack Obama's administration begins to insinuate itself into leadership of that department, has to be um, on notice that a second course is in order, and that is perhaps you call it Sharia compliant finance 201, where people are allowed to talk about what Sharia is, why it is seditious, and why its manifestations in the form of Sharia finance must be opposed, not supported, not abetted, not implemented, especially if, as seems entirely possible, the purpose of the Treasury Department is to use its newfound leverage in the financial markets to do that kind of promotion inside of our, our financial industry, much of which is now owned by the federal government or is being influenced by the $700 billion being dangled in front of um, the industry. So, and I mention this because as it happens, the Assistant Secretary of the Treasury responsible for that $700 billion slush fund, Neil Kashkari, is the kickoff speaker at today's Islamic Finance 101 conference. So I don't think this is a, a stretch to suggest that there may well be a connection here, one that's very worrying, one that is potentially very insidious. 
I'm delighted to have with me a number of uh, the leaders of organizations that have uh, joined this coalition to stop Sharia. Uh, they bring a wealth of experience and, um, and insights into both this problem and many others, and uh, their, the breadth of their expertise and interests, I think, uh, says a lot about the strength that this coalition will be um, mobilizing in the months ahead as we fight each of these efforts to insinuate Sharia uh, stealthily or through other means into our society.